What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here. And in this next video, what we're going to discuss is the factors that affect the price elasticity of demand. So throughout the video, what I'm gonna do is list out a bunch of factors and then I'm gonna expand on each one and then talk about how it relates to that elasticity of demand. And before we get into it, I wanna mention that depending on your prof and depending on the textbook, depending on the source that you're using in your class, this list may be presented in a different way. So there may be more factors presented, there may be less factors presented. Also, throughout what I'm gonna do is there's gonna be like a main factor, and then sometimes there will be sub-factors that will relate to that main factor that I'll talk about. But some sources may take that sub-factor and make it its own factor. So depending on your source and depending on what you're covering in your class, you may have to adjust accordingly, but for the most part, it should be all fairly similar. So before getting into the actual factors, what I want to do is do a quick review of what price elasticity of demand is, and it's basically a measure of the sensitivity of consumers' demand to a price change. So if you remember, demand and price, they have an inverse relationship. So if the price of a good goes up, then what's gonna happen is the demand is gonna go down. Or the opposite, vice versa, if the price goes down, then the demand is going to go up. Right? It's just how much that demand is going to change, that's what the price elasticity of demand measures. So if a consumer's demand is more sensitive to a price change, then that means that the price elasticity of demand of that product is gonna be more elastic. All right, so if that price increases and then that demand goes down by a lot, or if that price decreases and then that demand goes up by a lot, it's more sensitive and it's more elastic. The less sensitive, that change in consumer's demand is to a price change, the less elastic. Or the more inelastic. All right? Both of these mean the same thing. So just a quick little review. So when I'm going through these factors, what I'm gonna do is intuitively relate it back to this definition for the price elasticity of demand. So the first factor we'll cover is the type of good that you're dealing with. And the two main categories for the type of good that you'll see come up is a good is either going to be a necessity or it's going to be a luxury. And sometimes you may see a third category here in between these two called a comfort good. I'm gonna just stay on the extremes of the spectrum. So if a good is a necessity, so let's say like water, well, you could think about it intuitively. If the price of water goes up, is the demand for water gonna change by a lot? Well it's not going to change by a lot because it's a necessity. Everyone needs to drink water. And so a necessity in general is going to be less elastic. Its price elasticity of demand is going to be less elastic versus a luxury, let's say like a jewelry or maybe like a vacation. Luxury is basically something that you can live without. And so if that price starts increasing by a lot, then that demand is going to decrease by a larger amount than it would for a necessity. So a luxury is going to be, the consumer's demand is gonna be more sensitive to a price change. And so it's going to have a higher price elasticity of demand. Now, there are other factors that can affect this. So when I'm discussing these factors, I'm pretending like we're keeping everything else constant. But another factor that can affect this here is the consumer's wealth level. 
So if someone's really wealthy, then a vacation, which is a luxury still, it may not be too big of a deal if the price goes up. They're still going to go on that vacation. So there are other factors that can affect this, but just in general, this is the pattern. But a consumer's wealth can affect that, and that's actually a nice segue into the second factor. And the second factor is the proportion of income that's going to be spent on the good. Now, the proportion here, if we break this down into a little bit more detail, the proportion of income spent on the good. So this proportion, the measure is basically the price of the good over that consumer's income level. Right, so notice that there's two factors affecting that proportion. So if we have a larger proportion, how can we get a larger proportion? How can we make this fraction larger? Well, we can make the numerator larger, so the price of good can be high, or we can make the denominator smaller, so that income level is lower. Right, so a larger proportion, price of good is higher, and then that income is lower. And so intuitively, if you think about it, if a certain good represents a large proportion of your income, the price of it represents a large proportion of your income, and let's say that the price further increases, well, you're going to be more sensitive to price changes, right? If the price increases and it's already a large proportion at that base price, then that demand, your demand for it is going to go down because you're more sensitive to price changes because it's representing a larger part of your income. And so if the proportion of income spent on a good, if it's a larger proportion, then that good is going to be more elastic. And sometimes the reason why I wanted to write these two is sometimes you'll see both of these actually in different sources be shown as two different main factors. So here I put proportions, so I kind of put them both together, but sometimes you'll see the price of a good be its own factor and then income level be its own factor. Right? So if you're looking at just the price of a good, just in general, the higher the price of a good, the more elastic it's going to be, or the lower the income level, the more elastic the uh, or the more sensitive you're going to be to changes in price, so the more elastic goods are going to be, right? But here we're looking at them both uh, at the same time, simultaneously. Now, a smaller proportion well, how can this fraction be smaller? Well, we can make the numerator smaller, so the price of good would be lower and or that income is higher. And so just intuitively, if it's a smaller proportion of your income, so let's say like uh, a pack of gum, right? if the price increases, you're not going to be as sensitive to that price change, right? So your demand for that gum isn't going to change as much. And so if a good represents a smaller proportion, the price of that good is a smaller proportion of your income, then that good is going to be less elastic or more inelastic. Right? So again, sometimes these two factors, they may be their own factors. Here I combined them because I was talking about the proportion. Another sub category that relates to this here, and sometimes you'll see it as its own factor, is the type of economy. So if you think about the two extremes, we have a recession or we could have a booming economy. Now if there's a recession, that's going to fall under this here, 
lower income, or sometimes it's not even the income in the present level, it's the expectations of income. And so let's say there's a recession and you still have your job. Well, in the back of your mind, there might be a little bit more fear about your expectations of that job. So there may be a fear of you losing the job or maybe your salary or your income going down. So the type of economy is related to this here. And so you can write here, if there's a recession, perhaps your income doesn't go down, but the expectations of your income perhaps change. There may be a fear of it going down. And that would make most goods more elastic to you. You're going to be more sensitive with how you're spending that income. Versus if it's a booming economy, then that would fall under this scenario here. Your income may still stay the same, but you don't have too much fear of that income going away in the future. And so you might be a little bit more liberal with your spending. And so even if the price of a good increases, perhaps you'll continue to buy it because that fear isn't there of your income going away. And so that demand is going to change less. You're going to be less sensitive to price changes. And so just in general, if it's a booming economy, then the less elastic goods are going to be. All right. So I thought I'd mention that. And again, sometimes the type of economy that might be a separate factor depending on the source that you're using.